How's it going guys, David here. I should be called the Master Procrastinator because I feel so, so terrible uploading this video this fucking late. But I posted on Twitter asking you guys if you guys want to see it and I got a couple votes saying, yeah, better late than never, might as well just put it up. All right, screw it, I'm gonna do it. Here is my list for the top 10 movies of 2016. Now there are quite a few of them, so I'm gonna have to refer to my trusty iPod here. And also because there's so many, including the honorable mentions, I'm gonna try to breathe through them as fast as possible, especially the ones that I've already talked about in my reviews. So I'll be mentioning my reviews, I'll be referring to them, so if you guys wanna know my full details on some of those movies, then please check out the reviews on my channel at a later date. Kicking things off in the honorable mentions, a couple movies that I saw almost towards the latter half of 2016, uh, actually one of them I saw in 2017, but it was a 2016 movie because I just didn't have the resources to watch the movie because it was a limited release, screeners were being passed around, but I didn't get my hands on one, but finally I saw Moonlight, really good movie, really well made with a very provocative uh, message, but I do think it was kind of slow at times, and then Moana, and Moana I really, really enjoyed, the only reason, honest to God, the only reason why Moana is not on my top 10 list, because I enjoyed it that much, but the only little nitpick I have with the movie that keeps it from being on the list is that it kind of follows certain tropes that we've seen before in Disney movies, particularly the princess genre where me and my girlfriend were watching it and I'm like, yeah, that's not like King Triton at all. Kubo and the Two Strings, another animated movie which was really, really good, great animation. Uh, cool story, and then we got Star Trek Beyond, a definitive step up from Into Darkness, and one of the most enjoyable experiences that I have in the movie theater this past year, but didn't quite make the list. And almost in the same vein, Jungle Book. Jungle Book was really, really good. Great animation. In fact, I'm willing to put some money down that it's going to be taking home the Oscar for Best Visual Effects. As much as I'm rooting for Civil War or for, uh, for Rogue One, the Academy prefers those invisible effects where things look very real that you don't even notice it so I feel like Jungle Book has it in the bag for that Oscar win. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started with my top 10 movies of 2016 list. Number 10 is the movie that I was literally switching between this and Moana and both are actually Disney animated films that came out this year but the one that managed to make the list at the very bottom at number 10 is Zootopia. I really like Zootopia, really love the creative nature towards this world of animals that used to be animalistic but now they kind of evolved and they kind of explored a little bit of lore there and on top of it all it's really really funny, it has some great messages and overall some really great vocal performances from Jason Bateman and everything everybody else involved. And if I had to determine the one thing that put that over Moana on the list, the slot scene. That slot scene has me in tears every single time. Number 9 is another movie that was kind of on the back burner from the top 10 list, but the more I think about it, the more I enjoy it, and the more I think about how I enjoyed it, I almost want to watch it again. And it's a movie that I saw very late in the year. Hell or High Water, the first Best Picture nominee on my top 10 list that at first I was like, okay, you know, I really liked it, but is it really worthy of all these accolades? But the more I broke down the movie and broke down the chemistry between these characters and how they play into this modernized version of a Western, the more I actually enjoy how well they executed this with the way that the, the robberies play out, the way that these characters try to undergo this mission of robbing banks while at the same time they got somebody hot on their trail. It's an old school classic type of story that did play out certain in certain ways that I w would have expected it, which is why it doesn't rank higher in the list. And at one point I was keeping it off of my list. But it was very, very memorable because the more time went on, the more I actually thought about the movie. Number eight goes to Arrival. Arrival is a movie that is definitely a thinker's film. If you go in thinking that's going to be another alien invasion movie, the a la Independence Day, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And that's where the movie was the definitive highlight of the year for me because it took a smarter approach at the classic alien invasion movie where the aliens arrive and they're like, yeah, we're just here. We're not going to do anything. It's like it's like it's like somebody took an artistic alien versus human approach at the two kids in the back seat and the, one of the kids is like, "I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you." And the other kids is like, "Mom is touching me." It's pretty much that between humans and aliens within a realistic universe where they're trying to communicate with one another, but both are, have different languages. And it's through that medium and through that story that it gets you to think about what it what it would be like if aliens truly existed it and I honestly think that this is probably one of the most realistic portrayals of said scenario. 
Okay, now we're getting into some of the movies that I know you were expecting to be on this list because they're genre movies, but I enjoyed them that much. Number seven goes to Doctor Strange. I understand that the story is not all that different from that of, say, Iron Man, which happens to be in the same universe, but the visual effects, the charisma from everybody in the cast, including and most especially Benedict Cumberbatch as the t titular character, and just the overall feeling of fun and enjoyment and entertainment from beginning to end that gets ended up with those visual effects, which I think could possibly give Jungle Book a run for its money in the visual effects department come Oscar time. This was one of the most memorable experiences of the year for me in the in theater, and it's only because they were able to do what they couldn't do before with a certain character that, once again, I really couldn't give two shits about. I remember really passing off Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, all these B-list characters within the comics, and now, once again, Marvel was able to take somebody from that caliber and bring him up to A-list status, and Doctor Strange is no exception. And of course, I did manage to review the movie. You want to know more about my thoughts on the film? Please check out my review, as well as my spoiler talk on the film, on my channel. Number 6 is a movie that I was kind of thinking about putting up higher in the list, but... There are a couple of problems with it, but this does not make it any less of a unique experience because that's the definitive term, unique. Very much a different experience than any other film on this list. And that goes to Hardcore Henry. Hardcore Henry was, I think, in my opinion, one of the more underrated films of the year. Of course, the way it was filmed and the way it was put together might have been one of the things that turned off certain people from watching it in the first place. From that, for not only first-person perspective, but it's used with certain cameras to give it that look like it's being from the first-person perspective. It's not handheld footage because people are, are drawn to that because movies like that make bank. But this is from the first person where it's given that fisheye type of look, but it's uh, on top of that an action movie where certain frenetic things are happening all at once. But that's where it spoke to the inner gamer for me, and that's why I enjoyed it most of all over generic audiences. I know it's not going to be the same cup of tea for everybody, but to me it was very worthy of being at least at the number six spot. You want to know more on my thoughts? Please check out the review on my channel. Okay, number five might be one the could potentially be a little controversial and some of you might be oh mem g why the fuck is this <laughs> wtf is this uh, only at number five but i gotta be honest i had to go with my gut and i went ahead and i put rogue one a star wars story at number five reason for that is because as much as i really really enjoyed the movie walking out of it the more I thought about it, the more I did think that they could have done a better work with the characters. I mentioned this in the review, which, again, you can check out my channel. But the more I sat with it, the more I'm like, you had some clear opportunities to flesh those characters out. And the more time went on, the more I started to kind of distance myself from that emotional feeling that I did feel towards the end of the movie. Why is Darth Vader's costume inaccurate to the one from A New Hope, as many people pointed out on my Hot Toys Rogue One Darth Vader figure review. But... To each their own, and that is where I stand for Rogue One on my top 10 list. The honors of number 4 goes to a movie that almost slipped my mind. I have to thank my girlfriend for reminding me of this movie because we saw it so early in the year that it's very easy to just forget about it completely, forget that I saw this movie. Even though I loved the movie enough, you see so many things and you're busy with so many things towards the end of the year with the holidays and all the other shit that's coming out that it's very easy for a movie like this that didn't even get that much uh, press or, or marketing, anything like that, especially with how secretive this movie was leading up to its release. And I think at this point you know which one I'm talking about. 10 Cloverfield Lane. I almost This movie almost slipped my mind, but thanks to my girlfriend, she reminded me of it. And that's why from here on out, for the rest of the year, I'm jotting down every single movie right after I walk out of it on my iPod to make sure that I don't forget. But 10 Cloverfield Lane was an extraordinary experience because it took a, a concept that has been done before, which is kind of like the bottle film, uh, the Hitchcockian type of atmosphere of a character not knowing the true intentions, and wrap it within this science fiction type of uh, environment and this type of mystery that just has you on edge from beginning to end. And a lot of people are divisive on the ending. To be honest, I actually kind of like the ending. I don't think it's like the most perfect ending. It could have been done better. But for this kind of anthology type of series that we are developing in the Cloverfield universe, 
universe, I'm welcoming to it. I do believe I reviewed the movie, so please check that out. And I believe in the link there, in the description, there's going to be a link to my SoundCloud page where you can check out my spoiler discussion on 10 Cloverfield Lane. Number three goes to what I believe to be the commencement of Phase 3 for the Marvel Universe, the one that's kicking things off for the remainder of the this entire universe leading up to Infinity War, which an awful lot of people are going batshit crazy over right now after that video that got leaked, but, well not leaked, but released by Robert Downey Jr. Chris Pratt. Anyways, number three, obviously Captain America Civil War. Couldn't say enough great things about this movie. I know some people are kind of divisive on the villain's motivations and their input into the film and how he fit and all that. But to be honest, it set well with me. The action sequences are amazing. And furthermore, the friction between Cap and uh, Tony is one that I still think about and one that I still theorize about going forward here from here on out into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least what entails within that story. Obviously, Guardians doesn't really count because that's up in space, but going into Spider-Man, possibly even going to Thor Ragnarok, any mentions of Tony or Captain America are things to look out for because there's friction there. How's everything going to come together by Infinity War? And I think that Civil War was one of the best ways to not only develop that friction, but also include some new characters from this new version of Spider-Man to Black Panther, which I'm really stoked about. So many things to really take away from this movie. Of course, I reviewed the film. Please check out my channel for that. And now we boil it down to the last two. And this is where things got really complicated for me because... One movie came out super early in the year, and I knew very much ahead of time that this was going to make my top 10, seeing it so early in the year. And then another movie I saw almost at the very end of the year, and it's legitimately rivaling that first movie that I was dead set on being number one. And they're going boo boo bat After heavy, heavy deliberation, I finally ranked them, but please know that these movies, these last two movies, are pretty much tied. For the top spots. But if I had to rank them, then I guess I'm going to have to go with number two and give it to La La Land. La La Land is probably one of the most definitive experiences in the movie theater because all I can say is that I am not a huge fan of musicals, but I loved La La Land. I can't stop playing the songs on my iPod. I can't stop thinking about the characters, particularly Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone and their chemistry. And also the way the story is written because it kind of plays on certain beats that we've seen before about two characters, two underdog characters trying to make it big in L.A. But this takes a unique twist on that, not only weaving it through a musical, but also kind of subverting certain expectations, especially in the ending where you're like, oh, wow, you you went with that type of ending, something that's kind of unheard of within this genre. And I have to give you kudos for that. And at the same time, it doesn't feel like a complete cheat or a cop-out. It actually feels kind of realistic. And I'm like, yeah, I totally buy uh, buy into this. And I just could not stop thinking about this movie for the longest time, even to this day. I still long to see it in the theater, not even on DVD, not on my, at, at home on a tiny screen, in the theater. But preferably with somebody uh, different uh, or some unique or different uh, audience that I'm willing to take. And kind of, This is the type of movie that I want to take to other people and be like, watch this. You don't like musicals? I don't either. Check out La La Land because you're going to love it. And I'm recommending it to as many people as I possibly can. And number one, I think by this time you already know what it is because I haven't mentioned it in my top 10 list. How could it not make my top 10? How can it not be in my honorable mentions? So it's bound to be number one. But keep in mind, it was tied with La La Land for the longest time and I had to make a choice. And that choice is giving the number one spot to the Merc with the Mouth, Deadpool. This is the movie that me and my girlfriend are often quoting to each other, we're often referencing, and for good reason, because it's a well-made superhero movie, and it's also a hilarious movie overall. You take the superhero aesthetics, and it could very much be a movie about this mercenary who takes pride in the work that he does while at the same time breaking the fourth wall and making the whole experience of the film immersive for himself and for you, the audience members. And obviously, I can't say any more than what I already did in my review. Please check that out. I'll be posting an annotation or in the description somewhere. But not enough good things could be said about Deadpool. There's a reason for why an awful lot of people were thinking that it was going to get a Best Picture nomination at the Oscars. Because it was netting a lot of nominations up until that point. But alas, it was not meant to be. It's okay, Deadpool. You still have Golden Globes. 
was trying to make a ball pun there. That's, it failed. And that does it for my top 10 movies of 2016. Please let me know in the comments what was your favorite movies of 2016. What are your most anticipated movies leading into this year? I know we already got it's just a couple out of the uh, out of the way now that we're about halfway through February. And I know that I'm really late with this video. But I know y'all enjoy that Fifty Shades Darker. Yeah, It's going to be on your top 10 list, right? Top 10 worst probably. So give me all that delicious feedback in the comments below. Like and share this video. And of course, subscribe for more videos, including reviews of all the anticipated movies of 2017. Including anticipated games of 2017. And all the crazy shit that we got looking forward to in the next year. From movies to games, TV shows, etc. Please stay tuned for that. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. At DarkSpiderDavid. Until next time, guys. See you later, and again, I'm so, so sorry for the delay of this video. I will try to do my best to post a much more up-to-date one next year. Probably not.